Most people in America are looking at how to make a life worth living and a return worth having. When I begin each audio cast this way, I'm trying to remind people where their rights begin and end and what their opportunities are to move themselves forward until the end of their life. You see, we all have to make a living to pay for the three S's, shelter, sustenance, and services. But at the same time, we have to use the six or seven T's that allows us to transform our life into something else. The T's always include things like talent, time, and treasure. They also include things like technology and transportation. You see, we can continue going on in alliteration and giving things in simple definitions, but the bottom line is you have to focus on your life. And if you're not focusing on your life, then you cannot hear the sixth sense. The sixth sense is kind of a unique, politically correct way to talk about the angels around us, or what religion often talks about as the Holy Ghost, or angels, or jinn, or whatnot, whatever is a part of your version of faith. Faith bobs are a practice that will help you to establish what is truth in terms of what you might think based on data that is pulled from people's minds, whereas you can use data that comes from God. Now, you have to have a strong faith in order to use a fob, so the sixth sense is another way to do things kind of intuitively, empathically, or kind of, not necessarily presumptively, but sort of in analytically. There's a lot of different ways that people look at the sixth sense, but the sixth sense is something that God is okay with. He is pleased when people use that sixth sense, that ideology of that kind of spirit world, that monster's world sometimes, but in truth, as long as you're focusing on the light of the Lord, or however you call your heavenly divine mother and father god and in my case i use heavenly father and divine mother for the longest time and the angels of the world call them lord god but your choice of words is your choice of words but the sixth sense makes it really easy for people to understand that innately they understand that there's something else out there and they openly know that if they just use that listening skill inside their soul inside their spirit inside their heart their mind whatever they like to call it that they can maybe get along a little bit better, they can really move a little bit faster, and they can really keep themselves a little bit safer. When we ignore the sixth sense, we often end up in trouble, we often end up in abusive relationships, we often end up abusing people, and we often end up reminding people that they might be out of the house of God, and they could be performing what the old-fashioned, old-time religion used to call sin. A lot of times we might call this passive aggressivity, sometimes we might call it codependency, other times we might call it vanity, sometimes we might call it vigilantism, other times we might see it as vandalism, and a lot of times it's violence. You see, we have to be willing to look at ourselves as a peacemaker using the sixth sense as opposed to a life taker. A peacemaker is always trying to help people go forward, make sure people are fed, make sure people have a roof over their head, and make sure that they're able to access services in American culture or American society that helps them to go forward in life. We also want to be careful of using services that are about uh, literally preventing life, and that often gets thrown at people who didn't even try to do anything wrong, but people want to find something wrong. They want to make something wrong. They want to create something wrong. They want to script something wrong. They want to televise something wrong. They want to publicize something wrong, and they want to really kind of advise someone to do wrong. And we really cannot rely always on the human spirit. We cannot always rely on the human personality, the communication styles of others, to give us the correct advice. Sometimes people's advice are completely wrong. And a lot of times people act as a satanic force, and the co correct definition of Satan is of course an assaultive type of person, or an aggressor, or something like that. An antagonist is a really good word for that, and openly that's wrong. America has to stand on its own gumption of being about love, peace, and kindness. And if we focus on the positivity within the sixth sense, if we po focus on the lightness of the sixth sense, if we focus on the humanity and the dignity and the brethrenhood or brotherhood or sisterhood of the sixth sense in terms of what we know to do that is good, then we are all much better as a society. You see, society can only evolve and change for the greater good or content theory what is good for the one is good for the many in sort of a divergent process of thinking as opposed to a dialog dialogic process of thinking which is very linear and a uh, soul focused almost like the horse with the blinders on but divergent thinking allows you to think about other people's viewpoints in journalism we use something that's sort of the three-sided story meaning 
that there's one side here, another side on the other side, possibly opposing and antagonizing, and then there's that kind of faithful, middle ground, fair, balanced point of view, which I tend to use as, what's God's view on this? But again, the sixth sense can help you determine what is God's view on things. Because sometimes we go off so much in our analytical mind that we're starting to create stories that aren't really real. We're starting to manipulate people, trying to say, well, you said this when they know darn right that they didn't say those things to you. And you're trying to pretend like they said those things to you. I have a slight sibling who used to do that all the time. I'm like, nope, I'm very accountable with my words. I'm very much remembering what I've said in the last, you know, two to three months that I know I didn't say that. There are other times when we're under great stress that we don't even remember half the things we've said or done, and that's sort of scary to us, which is why we have to trust in our sixth sense who can go, actually, you did say that, or oh, no, you didn't say that. And you have to be willing to listen to that instead of a human being that might be lying to you. The value of the sixth sense is that it allows you to justify the ends and not the means. Does that make sense to you? Because if you're justifying the ends and not the means, then it means that you're hearing what should be done as opposed to handling what you think should be done. You see, what should be done to create peace is different than what you want to do to create war. And creating war in American families, in American relationships, in partnerships, in business, and friendships isn't going to help us anymore. You see, America is a good 10 to 15 years away from an inner civil war because we have failed our people at our borders. We did not use the sixth sense when we were making determinations of who should and shouldn't be here. We've got the ACLU who's sort of screwing us out of the right to say no to people. And frankly, sometimes we have to say no to people. But the people that we say no to, we have to be very clear on why are we choosing to say no? And did we give them half a chance to explain their side of the story or did we just say no because we felt like it and we didn't want to hear from God's glory side at all? We didn't want to look at what we were doing and how it was impacting the other person, what it made them do, what it, whether it made them cry, whether it made them feel like they were about to die, and openly that's immoral. You see, the sixth sense helps you keep yourself moral and within the context of the laws of America which are about protecting human rights. And human rights are about loving people, human rights are about transporting people, human rights is about not deciding for people but empowering people to decide. Something that we have a major abuse going on all over the world is people wanting to be in power over people. A lot of the sexual assault situations are about power over a person. A lot of the physical abuse situations are about someone taking power over your life. A lot of the inappropriate touch situations are about someone wanting to be in power over your body or over your resources, and that's not good over time. We have to be careful with technological abuses because technology can be used to monitor people, sure, to keep America safe, but it can also be used to harm people that we just don't want in our life or we don't want in our communities. And no offense, nobody has the right to reject a life from a community that the Lord has created. And that's where the sixth sense come in handy because the sixth sense people will be saying, hey, in spirit world, don't be doing that. God is the creator of heaven and earth. God created that person, and you should be a little bit more loving and kind. And that's good. And the sixth sense is about peace, love, and kindness. Now, if I've waxed on too long about the sixth sense, I apologize, but I was asked by someone to do something on the sixth sense so that you can get the concept in a different, more politically correct way. Because talking about the sixth sense is pretty straightforward. We've all seen that movie. We all know the benefits. We all got what happened when someone really listened and literally saved, didn't save the girl's life, but it definitely helped us know what happened in her life. You see, the sixth sense can give us premonitions. The sixth sense can give us definitions, but the sixth sense is used to guide us and lead us not into temptation. And people are tempted all day long to be tainted. Someone who sets out to taint a community against someone is an immoral and illegal person. There are many federal laws that get abused by people who are trying to taint other people. Go ahead, downsize that clothing on the person so it fits awfully tight for me and doesn't fit at all. That's actually illegal. It's also possibly a sex crime and a hate crime, and we can't do that here in America. We have a lot of people in America with a lot of cultures in America, but the true aspect of American culture is recognizing the red, white, and blue of the flag. The red is the blood that was shed for our nation to keep us safe from the world and from internal predators. The blue is obviously the tears that have been cried for the people who have died to do that. And the white is a reminder of purity of heart that we're supposed to carry with us going through our lives, reminding us of peace and how we are the keepers of peace sometimes through the United Nations and sometimes throughout the world. 
that's a heavy burden for our shoulders on our soldier soldiers to carry and a heavy burden on their shoulders but that is what the Peace Corps is about you see the United States military is really kind of a propaganda arm for the Peace Corps that says you're not going to touch that woman inappropriately and you're not going to sexually traffic our people and you're not going to bring those ugly technologies into our com country which uh, doesn't allow a person to know what's going on while you're doing things to them and you're not going to bring in that snake oil salesman who's going to steal from you and take away our consumer rights to have good goods you see we have to be the towers of the line and the line says that as long as it doesn't hurt another person then it's fine but sometimes that shit does hurt people and the sixth sense can help us to define not people but define what is right by people you don't have the right to prejudge someone but you also don't have the right to discriminate against someone you see you don't have the right to single someone out and start abusing them in the night and you don't have the right to start saying that you're going to help someone but that you don't actually ever ask their permission whether or not you could do something for someone and a lot of people will say i love you but i'm going to make you do this because i love you and it's good for you no offense, but if the person is over the age of the majority, you don't have the right to force them in the concept of slave to do one thing against their will. Not one thing. And most people are not mentally ill, so you don't have the right to try and commandeer them in that way. And most people do not like slavery in the world, so they don't, people, those people of color, those people from other foreign nations, do not have the right to take a human being and make them into a slave. So the sixth sense in America can help you to prevent a lot of problems that we're facing. 